This tricky topic discusses Piaget's stages of cognitive development, outlining his theories of early cognitive development in particular. Early cognitive development was extensively studied by Jean Piaget. He studied early infant and childhood advances in the ability to think, pay attention, reason, remember, learn, and solve problems. In particular, he mostly studied attention, and this is because attention can be observed and measured in all ages, even when the individuals are too young to communicate via language or other means. The main question Piaget asked himself was, how does a child's thinking develop? His interests in life's work trying to answer this question stem from the simple observation that children often answer simple questions wrong at different developmental stages. And Piaget wanted to know in what way do children think that makes them answer these questions wrong? As mentioned, Piaget thought a potential doorway into answering this question was by studying a child's attention. He viewed all children as actively constructing knowledge about the world by forming schemas with new experiences. Schemas are very important. They're mental representations of aspects of the world which provide a framework for understanding the world. There are two important mechanisms for schema formation. They are assimilation and accommodation. Assimilation is fitting a new experience into an already existing schema when children encounter something new. Accommodation is the process by which a child will change an existing schema to incorporate new information. For example, say a child sees a donkey for the first time. With assimilation, the child might fit the donkey into an already existing schema they have of a horse, for example. Whereas if the child used accommodation, the child would change the existing schema of the horse, acknowledging that this is actually not a horse, but indeed a donkey. Once again, it's really important to illustrate that Piaget's primary focus was infant thought. He did this by looking at their ability to form new schemas for novel and unfamiliar stimuli by looking at their focus and attention. It was based on these specific observations of children that Piaget formed his idea of early cognitive development in which he came up with four distinct phases of cognitive development from birth through adolescence. These were first the sensory motor stage, which lasts from birth to about two years old. Next was the pre-operational stage from about two to five years old, and then the concrete operational stage from six to 11, and then finally, the formal operational stage from ages 12 and up. To begin, in the sensory motor stage, Piaget claimed that the knowledge that a child or an infant gains is primarily through the senses, that is through tasting, smelling, seeing, touching, and hearing. One phenomenon that Piaget believed to be indicative of these early stages, and in particular the early stages of the sensory motor stage, was a lack of object permanence, and that's an absence of the ability to recognize that objects still exist even when they're not being sensed. One way to judge this is to have an object of interest, like a toy, in front of an infant, and then put a cloth or some other object in front of it. For the first eight to nine months, infants will not understand that the object of interest is still present, but just on the other side of the barrier. This might be one of the reasons that playing peekaboo with infants is so entertaining. In the second and pre-operational stage of cognitive development, Piaget believed that certain qualities of thinking begin to develop. The first being symbolic thinking, that is using symbols like words or letters to represent ideas or objects. The second is animist thinking. This is the belief that inanimate objects are alive. For example, children might think of the sun as being alive because it follows them when they walk. In addition, they might think that their stuffed teddy is actually a real bear. The third is egocentrism, which is to view the world from one's own perspective while being unable to view it from another person's perspective. This theory can be illustrated by one of Piaget's classic experiments referred to as the Three Mountains Task. In this experiment, three slightly different mountains are arranged on a table, with a child on one side and a doll on the other. The child is given three options of drawn perspectives and asked to pick the one that the doll was likely looking at. A child in this stage will pick the perspective they themselves are seeing every single time as they're unable to imagine what the doll's perspective might be. Finally, the fourth is a lack of conservation. The absence of the ability to recognize that some properties of an object can change while others remain constant. For example, children in this stage lack conservation of liquid. 
If they see two equal glasses with the same amount of liquid in each glass, they will recognize that the amounts of water are the same. However, if you then in front of them pour the water from one of these glasses into a petri dish, they will now say that the glass has more water because it's bigger, even though the amount of water never changed from the glass to the petri dish. This leads into the third stage, which is the concrete operational stage, where children can now conserve shape, number, and liquid. If looking at the previous problem, children will now identify that even though the size of the container is different, the amount of water between the glass and the petri dish is the same. However, this ability is limited to mental observations of real or concrete objects and events. In this phase, they still cannot understand abstract ideas and reasoning. For example, they have a hard time with the worded questions where they have to imagine objects. Let's look at the following written example. Let's say a child is asked, if you have water in a small cup, then you pour it into a bigger cup, which cup has more water? They would answer the bigger cup in this stage of development. Lastly, in the fourth formal operational stage, formal logic develops. For example, a child in this stage could reason that if Maria is a woman, and all women are mortal, then Maria is mortal. In addition, children develop scientific reasoning and hypothesis testing skills during this stage. Before ending, it's important to note that Piaget's theories have been widely criticized by some psychologists because other research has shown that there's a lot of variance in the way children progress through these stages and that young children may actually have more advanced cognitive abilities than Piaget gave them credit for. For example, babies understand basic statistics and probabilities, and we'll look at a specific experiment that talks about this in a second. However, if you're interested in this, Alison Gopnik published a book in 2009 called The Philosophical Baby that discusses these claims in more detail. Before finishing, let's look at the following experiment. This experiment is one example illustrating an infant's ability to understand basic statistics and probability. Researchers in this experiment took many black balls and very few red balls and put them into a box in front of 8-month-old infants. It's really important that they did it in front of the infants such that they could see the proportion of black to red balls going into the box. The idea is that the infants were actually able to see and recognize the different proportions of the black and the red balls and therefore make basic statistical predictions based on this information. The way this is illustrated was the researchers then put their hands into the box and would pull out different combinations of red and black balls. So when the researchers pulled out an expected hand of many black and very few red balls, the babies would pay little attention. However, when researchers pulled out many red and few black balls, babies spent a significant amount of time focusing on that hand. So researchers therefore concluded that the babies were recognizing this as an unlikely event, suggesting that they understood the basic premise that a sample group from the box should reflect the contents of the full box, which in this case they knew was many black balls and few red balls. This concludes this tricky topic looking at Piaget's stages of cognitive development. Thanks for listening.